started writing a play. When it's finished, I want the two of you to play the leading roles. And what shall you call it, Master? Watchmaker's Son. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my Watchmen episode one video. There's all kinds of comic book Easter eggs. This is meant to be a sequel series to the comic book, not the movie, so we'll break it all down. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing an HBO Now giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Watchmen moment on the video. Careful for spoilers, if you have not seen the episode yet, we'll do top 10 WTF and Easter eggs. Starting with number 10, the flashback to the riots. So this is actually a real event happening in 1921, but there's a lot of plays within plays, stories within stories. They're doing a very Tales of the Black Freighter within the series where characters are watching stories or listening stories or reading stories about the story within the story. So it gets really meta. If you didn't read the original comic series or you haven't seen the movie, Tales of the Black Freighter was just an in-universe comic book story that told the story of what was happening in the actual Watchmen story only with old-timey pirates. If you're not familiar with this in real-world history, this actually happened. It was basically 1921, just this giant massacre of all these people. It was really terrible, but they do a really good job of connecting it to what's happening in present day as well as some of the characters in present day through Lou Gossett Jr.'s character. Number nine, you transition to present day Tulsa, Oklahoma on that same road where Lou Gossett Jr. as a little boy crashed. The cop gets taken down by the cavalry member, sort of setting off the action of the episode, and they want you to believe that the cavalry has been dormant for a long time and they've come back and they're the big villain that everybody needs to take down. But we don't really find out till the end of the episode that they're really only a small part of this grand conspiracy as Lou Gossett Jr.'s character teases. But obviously the next big Easter egg is the Rorschach mask. They spend a lot of time during this opening scene kind of letting you know what the rules are in present day. So the cops actually can't unlock their guns unless a dispatcher does it back at the base, but there's all kinds of modern technology that they've derived from Dr. Manhattan. So if it wasn't clear, you see all these cars driving around, like even Angela or Sister Knight, whatever you want to call her, drives around in an old school looking muscle car, but it's electric. All their cars are electric based on the science that they were able to derive from Dr. Manhattan by studying his abilities. The soundtrack was amazing. We get our first cues for the Nine Inch Nails music. Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor are doing the music for the series. The cool thing is, is they actually found out that HBO was making a Watchmen series and reached out to HBO to try and do the music for it before HBO reached out to them. Number eight, you go to present day, you see Angela teaching them how to bake cookies. There's a lot of Easter eggs in this scene too. They also convey a lot of history through her exposition. So there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs. There's a Dr. Manhattan stream on national television that's running 24 seven. He's on Mars constructing and destroying things while she's talking about the exact same thing. It's a big metaphor for what's happening with Dr. Manhattan right now. So it's clear that he's back at least in relative proximity to Earth. He's not in a different galaxy because at the end of the original comic series and at the end of the movie, he implied that he was leaving to go to a different part of the universe. But at some point, I guess it's implied that he came back and he's basically next door, just a couple planets away. When she's making the mooncakes, when she cracks the eggs, it turns into the Watchman smiley face with a little blood spatter. They gave you a little history lesson on the Vietnam War. The reason why it's a state is because of what Dr. Manhattan did during the Vietnam War with the comedian. They make a reference to Robert Redford being president. You see him in the background here. He's been president for the last 30 plus years ever since Nixon. And we find that they put Nixon on Mount Rushmore right next to Lincoln. They also reference something called Red Fordations, which is basically reparations from Robert Redford. And I think that has something to do with the white knight that they reference. So number seven, the White Knight, they don't completely explain it, but I felt like they give you enough to know what happened. And it's supposed to be the last major attack that the cavalry perpetrated on all the law enforcement agents, which is the basis for why they all wear masks now. They make a reference to not paying taxes later during the interrogation. I also believe that people who were part of that don't have to pay taxes anymore to as part of those red fordations. Number six is raining squids. So a siren goes off while they're driving down the street and it immediately just starts hailing down all these tiny squids if it's no big deal, like it's been going on for a long time. They even have a special cleanup crew, like you have the garbage men that come around picking up people's trash, cleaning up all the squids. There's even a little symbol on the back of this truck. We don't know why that's happening, but they make a reference to a trans-dimensional attack conspiracy. So I think that has something to do with Ozymandias, but they don't completely reveal that. 
There were a lot of Ozymandias references to the original series at the end of the episode that I'll get to, and one of those was to the squid that he teleported into New York at the end of the comic series. Pretty safe bet that these tiny squid that are hailing down have something to do with that. One of the squids, when it rains down as the kids looking at it, even mushes up to look kind of like a Rorschach ink blot. There were also a lot of Rorschach references when they were interrogating that prisoner too. But number five, the American Hero Story TV show. That's another Tales of the Black Freighter type of device, the way they're using it. A show within the show commenting on what the actual TV show is about. But it's basically meant to be a TV show about the adventures of the original Minutemen. Because you remember that in history, Watchmen actually happened, so Dr. Manhattan was around, all the events of the original movie, and many years before that, the adventures of the Minutemen. There's a reference on Lou Gossett Jr.'s newspaper that Adrian Veet is dead, that's Ozymandias, so the world believes that he's dead, which we know is not true because he totally shows up at the end of the episode over in Wales. We hear the Cavalry's manifesto, it's not clear what their mission is, they don't find out what their mission is by the end of the episode, they only know that they were doing something with really old school batteries. Old school watch batteries, that is. No surprise, watches are very important to watchmen. The idea of the watch itself, but also the doomsday clock. There were several references to that, like their big chant is tick tock, which is a literal reference to the doomsday clock of the original series, but the doomsday clock itself is actually a real world thing. It's sort of the countdown to nuclear annihilation. Like during the Cold War, how close were we to actually firing missiles on Russia and how close were they to firing missiles on us? A lot of that gets into the idea of the grander conspiracy that they teased during the episode, and that also sort of dovetails with what's going on with Ozymandias at the end. He says, I'm writing a new play. That'll become more clear in the next couple of episodes. The translation on the Latin phrase that they all chant isn't quite perfect, but it has something to do with the guards who guard themselves. When we go into Don Johnson's office, she's sitting there drinking from an owl mug, another night owl reference. There's a giant police spec owl ship later in the episode, all kinds of night owl references. There's lots of owls hooting through the episode. You actually hear real owls in the middle of the night. I think the significance of the mug though is just to the original night owl who used to be a police officer before he took up the name night owl and became a vigilante. Number four, the interrogation. So they throw the suspect into what they're calling the pod and you get to see what Looking Glass does. He doesn't have any special powers. He's just really good at interrogating people and this is meant to be a sophisticated version of a Rorschach ink blot test. They eventually beat the information about the ranch out of him about their home base. So number three, the battle of the cattle ranch, a literal cattle ranch, but also their secret hideout. They don't really make it clear how big their group is, but they're obviously called the Seventh Cavalry. That's actually a reference to Custer, Little Bighorn. Like she gets the pager call with the message that says Little Bighorn. That was where Custer died at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Apparently they don't care about collateral damage because they mow through all their own cattle to get at the police. But probably my favorite moment from this big fight scene was the reveal of the owl ship. It's revealed that Don Johnson and his co-pilot, who's actually named Pirate Jenny, which is also a reference to the song Pirate Jenny, which was used during the Watchmen movie and is also an important idea of the Watchmen comic book series. They're in a version of an owl ship that looks like it was spec'd out for police use, like maybe Night Owl 2 sold his technology to the government or to the police force because it seems like they built a brand new version. It's not the original owl ship. It's just another law enforcement vehicle that probably other police departments all over the country have. They never quite figure out what the batteries are for that they were trying to escape with, but that will probably come back around in the next couple of episodes. Number two, speaking of coming back around, welcome back, Ozymandias. So if it wasn't clear from all the Easter eggs and foreshadowing, Jeremy Irons is playing the older version of Ozymandias that apparently the world thinks is dead. They shot all of his scenes in Wales, which I believe is where this is meant to be. So he has this vast country estate in Wales and he's just been hiding out this whole time, living this really weird eccentric life. Apparently clothes are optional, like he says it's a big deal that he's putting clothes on. I felt like it was pretty clear the anniversary that they were referring to, even if you didn't read the original comic series. They're referring to the original event at the end of the comic series where he teleported a giant squid into New York City to make people believe that there was an alien attack, a trans-dimensional attack, which they also kind of referenced during the interrogation earlier. You see the play that he's writing, he talks about it later, he calls it the Watchmaker's Son, which is obviously a reference to Dr. Manhattan, who is literally the son of a watchmaker. When he says a tragedy in five acts, that's going to be broken up through five acts of the TV show over the course of nine episodes. The cake is yellow, designed to look like his classic Watchmen comic book costume, but also the pattern of the icing is made to look like the squid draped over the top. 
Right now, he is kind of giving off a villain vibe, which is kind of the way he came off during the original series. But just like he was in the original comic series, he isn't necessarily an evil person. He's trying to advance the cause of humanity, but he's doing it, like he says, through fear. So that might have something to do with them raining squids on everyone all the time and this growing conflict with the 7th Cavalry in the Oklahoma police. The watch that they give him as a gift is the watch from the original Watchmen comic book series. That's why it seems like he's triggered a little bit when he sees it like he's surprised. He has a little bit of a flashback. And obviously number one WTF was the ending of the episode where Sister Knight finds Lou Gossett Jr. claiming to have hung up Don Johnson's character. But it's pretty clear that she doesn't believe that he did the job. But they also don't believe that the 7th Cavalry was responsible. So somebody else is messing with them here in Don Johnson's character. And that also will probably dovetail with Ozymandias' brand new plan. Overall, it was a great setup. There's a lot of bigger stuff in play here. Like, they make it seem like this is all about the police versus the cavalry. But then they blow that up at the end of the episode by making it seem like it's a way, way bigger thing going on. So if you spotted any big Easter eggs during the episode that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments and let me know what your favorite part was. I'll wait to see how everyone feels about the series after this first episode and how this video does before I plan a whole bunch more Watchmen videos. But if you guys like it and the video does well, I will do all the episodes. The Mandalorian Star Wars series is also starting in a couple weeks too. Rick and Morty is coming back. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming up, including the Witcher Netflix series. I'll name a giveaway winner when I post my next Watchmen video Everybody click here to watch that Star Wars Episode 9 teaser trailer and click here for that Game of Thrones prequel teaser trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.